you very much. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I'm uh, very happy to be here. It's my first time. Um, well, Raul couldn't be here, but uh, so I'm going to be talking about today about what really changed politics, religion, and social interaction at an early colonial site uh, found in the so the research, the research study I present is part of the Capanian project from the Ministerio de Cultura del Perú. And this is the biggest comprehensive effort aimed to investigate the Inca road network and its associated sites during the late intermediate period, the late horizon, and the early colonial period. As it has been uh, widely discussed in the literature, the Spanish conquest represented a, a very complex period in the Andes, in which a new political, economic, and social order was imposed, while local people were already going through a crisis, especially a demographic one, that reduced the population at an exorbitant rate even before the Spaniards arrived. Changes during the early stages of the colony can be seen through the archaeological record where the architecture and material culture reflect a transition period and a resistance of local traditions to subsist beyond these changes. However, there are still only a few studies focusing on this period of time for the Luring Valley. So in this context, I will talk about Mirimir, an archaeological site that was built during the second half of the 16th century. Uh, and it is an early colonial town that shows syncretic elements in its architecture, probably reflecting this complex transition period. Okay, so here's the site name of Mirimira. This is the Luring Valley, and it's located uh, approximately 40 kilometers from Pachaca. Here's the Rimut Valley and the city of Lima. It's uh, around two hours in car from, from Lima. So what we, do we know for the late periods in the Luring Valley? Um, we know that it was probably very densely populated in the late French Valley periods. During the LIP and the late horizon, the Ichmas and the Incas built and occupied several sites along the valley, su such as Pampa de Flores, Tijerales, Pantilma, Huaycán de Cieneguilla, and Moya, among others. And although we, uh, although we have previously proposed that there's some type of variation in the characteristics of the architecture in these sites that probably reflect uh, social and political differences. All of them are multi-component sites. These sites have domestic and public spaces and cemeteries. And also, so this is an example, this is the uh, site of Chontai, and you can see how it has like an agglutinated architecture. This is very similar to what we found in all the sites that I have pointed out here. Um, and in the case of the domestic compounds in all of these sites, they are formed by a series of agglutinated rooms around patios and surrounded by perimeter walls. So here is one example of one of these compounds in Moye. It has a perimeter wall, and then all the rooms uh, agglutinated inside around patios. Okay. So the architecture at Nieve, of Nieve Nieve contrasts with the pattern, and it is unique in this area. This site is located uh, in the middle valley at uh, about 800 meters above sea level, and it is in an area uh, known as the Chaupiyunga. It stands near one of the main roads that for form part of the Inca network. The one going, uh, sorry, so we can see here the site. I only mark here the road, but it's supposed to continue at least I'm not sure if it goes this way or this way, but then it goes around this way. But it's only preserved in this area. Okay, so um, this road that went uh, from Pachacama to the Inca Administrative Center of Hatun Sausa, located in the central highlands of Peru. A few meters east, there's another settlement, settlement called Avillay. Okay, this is Avillay. Um, this site has at least, at least two occupations. Uh, what probably they came to the late horizon. So while well, Nieve Nieve shows uh, this agglutinated architecture in one of its sectors, in this sector here, which is similar to what we've seen for the rest of the valley, what calls our attention is the presence of these 16 rectangular uh, archi architectural compounds. They are located along streets, forming a bridge, as well, uh, and also the presence of a church here. 
So this is uh, this very irregular orthogonal pattern does not appear in any other site in the valley. And for us, this clearly suggests a uh, Spanish origin. So during 2016, we excavated one of the compounds, compound nine. Actually, we excavated the whole compound uh, for conservation purposes. And then we also put some units, we put a unit here, another one here, here, inside the church, outside, and here near, uh, near the past. So what did we find in this excavation? Well, the evidence recovered as well as the architectonic characteristics seem to indicate that the site was built, built during the second half of the 16th century and probably occupied at least until the first decades of the 17th century. We recorded a maximum of two occupational floors in most units. Most of the ceramic material we found correspond to local styles, although we, although we found also early green glazed and Panama style ceramics associated to the occupational floors. We also found some of these beads called the Nueva Cadiz beads. And all of these materials are affiliated to the second half of the 16th century and the first half of the 17th century. So we also found a funerary context at the plaza by the church. So we were excavating actually inside the church and then we had a, uh, uh, something that looked like a wall and we wanted to see if it was, uh, if, if, it, if it continued under the church wall. So we opened a small unit outside and we found this area. Uh, it was in a, an extended position with a pre feet crossed and hands over the chest, very similar to colonial burials found at other sites such as Huanucopapa uh, and So we can see that the site was probably built in two moments. So we have two orientations, the church and this sector here, and then the 16 compounds in a different orientation. So this might be indicating two moments of construction for the site. But also we have the, as I was saying, we have two floors, two occupational floors, so probably there's also uh, remodeling of these structures as we are going to see later. So at least two moments inside this sector. Um, so, and the buildings were remodeled and extended also at least in two moments. So, another interesting thing about the site is that the area used for the construction of the compounds was carefully planned. The land was divided in 16 rectangles. These rectangles all had the same size, approximately 10 by 24 meters. And even though in some cases the constructions didn't occupy the whole area, none of the other compounds invaded that space. So we can see, for example, three examples here. So the rectangle in this case was all these. But, only, but it was only built in half of it, but then none of the other houses invaded this space. Actually, the only ones that grew out of this rectangle were these three, uh, one, two, and three, in this side where there was nothing else, because here we have the hill, so that's like the end of the site. Okay, so. Okay, so these domestic compounds contain one, two, or three houses, each one having its own access to one of the streets. So we, can, we have some examples here, and these little arrows are marking the exits, the accesses to the streets. So for example, in this case, there are two houses. This would be one house, and this would be another house. So about the church, on the other hand, um, it has a similar shape to as others already studied for the early colonial period in the Andes, such as the ones located in Magdalena de Cao, Mauchuyacta, San Luis de Potosí, and Dorada Alta. I couldn't, I, I don't know how to say it in English, so it has this shape, it's very special for a period of time. It's, um, this part of the church is called the abside, so it's the abside o chaval, that's the shape, which is very characteristic, so we find that here, and we've seen that in other early colonial sites. So, based on ethno-historic documentation, we know that Nieve is located in the edge of the territories controlled by the Ichmas. 
and, and that by the end of the late horizon, this land was the invite, invaded by the Yaoyos, a highland ethnic group looking, looking for ideal lands to cultivate coca. The area between uh, Chontai and Chiyago was known as Isikaya, and it was occupied by 10 Ayus, four from the coastal region and six from the highlands. So Nyevenyevi is here, and we have that all this area was called Sisikaya in the Middle Valley, uh, and that these people, the, the Yaoyos, were coming here to cultivate coca. But, um, ah, and also we know that for, So also we have uh, a lot of, of historic information for this area. Uh, we know that there were the Reducciones Toledanas that started in the year uh, 1570. We have uh, the Revisita de Sisicaya that was published by Frank Salomon entirely uh, in this book. We have the Guarochiri manuscript uh, that dates approximately from, uh, from 1609. And the description, uh, Descripción de Relación de la Provincia de los Yaudios, uh, Yaudios y Lorín Yaudios, hecha por Diego Davila Briseño, corregidor de Guarochiri. This is from 1586. This is, all, uh, this is, of course, beside all the information that you can get in the archives for these years. Um, okay, so we know that Sisicaya became part of the Repartimiento de Guarochiri, which, wa which was divided in seven towns called Reducciones or Pueblos de Indios. So we have San Damián de Checa, Santa Maria de Jesús de Guarochiri, San Pedro de Huancaire, San Francisco de Sisicaya, San Lorenzo de Quinti, Santa Ana de Chaucarima, and San José de los Chorrillos. And all of these towns continue to be occupied until today. According to this information, the colonial town for the area of Sisicaya would be San Francisco de Sisicaya, which is a small town located three kilometers uh, east from Nieve Nieve. So this is very interesting because we can see, well, more or less, the, pla the, the like the distribution of the blocks and the streets with the central plaza and the church. Uh, most of these towns have grown bigger than the, the original plan, but basically maintaining the same order. Probably less in Huarochiri, which is the, like the biggest city uh, of all these, the other ones are smaller towns. But they, they maintain the, the original grid with the plaza and the church, you know, like a lot of other towns in the highlands of Peru. So the construction of Reducciones or Pueblo de Indios was part of an administrative, administrative reform implemented by Viceroy Francisco Toledo since uh, 1570. The main idea was to have people congregated in a smaller number of towns to be able to have a better control over the tax collection and evangelization process. Although there is evidence of several towns built before, these type of towns had particular characteristics in their layout and organization. Juan de Matienzo, who later accompanied Toledo in the reduction process, extensively described how these towns should be organized. So here is uh, some of this description. And we can see um, and we can see some of these pictures at Nieve Nieve, such as the planning in blocks, the church, and the presence of other buildings probably used for administrative functions. Um, but also, uh, in the case of compound nine, the one that we uh, excavated the hole, um, it seems to have been used as the house of the local buraca. Although it occupies the same space as the other ones, because remember I told you that 16 compounds have the same size, uh, this one has uh, thicker walls, taller walls, and its internal distribution matches the instructions given by Toledo for the design of the houses of the cacique. So if you carefully read uh, the description, you'll see things like uh, like when they talk about the rooms and they talk about what they call a camera and recamara. So it's like one room and then you get into another room. They talk about how uh, they shouldn't be sleeping on the floor. So they have these, uh, these like little walls on the floor and we think that they were using this to uh, put uh, maybe some uh, wood on top uh, for sleeping. Uh, also the, the the patios, the the kitchen area, etc. Here I'm going to talk about this later because this shows two uh, construction moments for the for the same for the same compound. But although we have all this information, we have not been able to get to determine the exact exact time that Nieve was built and occupied. We do know that the name of the site does not appear 
in any historic record. Formally, um, formally the Spanish reduction of San Francisco de Sisicaya, uh, and most researchers have proposed that it is located where the modern city of Sisicaya stands, the modern town. So this is very interesting because for us it's obviously uh, a reduction colonial. When we talk about reducciones, we're talking uh, of a very limited uh, time, a very specific time. Um, and then we have this uh, town that is only three kilometers away and it has the same uh, name, so obviously everyone thinks that this is a reducción. I, I haven't been able to excavate this little town. I know, for example, from the church that the, the, the bell says uh, 1720, so this is much uh, later. Uh, so we're assuming that maybe it, at some point it moved, uh, but obviously the other one is also a, a Spanish town. So, however, Nieve Nieve uh, would have also been a reducción, as I was saying, maybe built and occupied earlier. We have previously proposed that Nieve Nieve may have been the original reducción of San Francisco de Sisicaya, and even that this was the site that was occupied during the Revisita, a census that took place in 1588 and was entirely published by Frank Salon. So, based on the details. <laughs> So based on the, this detailed information, we established that at the time, the town had approximately 600 inhabitants. Uh, and even though only four of the Ayus were local, they congregated 80% of the population. So uh, for example, if um, the, the Revisita says that there's uh, 708 people, but only 652 are alive. Uh, and then we have that a lot of the people, uh, around 50 uh, people be, uh, recorded in this census, uh, were tributaries to the town, but didn't uh, live at the, at, the, at, the, at the town. They were living in other, in other places, and this was recorded there. Uh, so we made like an exercise to see if it was probably to fit 600 people in, in Nieve Nieve. And you could, it's very fascinated. So um, the thing is that we think that obviously these people weren't living there. They were saying that they were living there for the, for the record. Uh, but probably they went back to their chakras uh, as soon as the, the Spaniards uh, left. So, um, so, and we have the, uh, as I was saying, these, uh, <coughs> you're supposed to have these uh, people from the, from the highlands coming uh, to cultivate the coca, and you have these six foreign ayus, but the, these ayus had only 123 people, only 20% of the total population. So most of these people is local, is from the middle valley, it's not from the highlands. Um, and these, uh, these ones come from Guarachiri and places uh, up in the, in the valley, um, and only as what uh, Mora used to call these islas. Um, and they were probably bigger in pre-Hispanic times and then uh, decreased, uh, the population decreased. <coughs> uh, so this is also interesting, also um, the internal distribution of this domestic, oh sorry, uh, okay, so as well as we've seen before, Nieve Nieve is different from the other reducciones. For example, this is the town of Santa Ana. This is one of the reducciones in Guarachiri that I showed before. You can see a little more detail here, uh, which is also a reducción toledana. Looks very similar to Mauchu Yarta, which is a reducción of Santa Cruz de Tute in the Colca Valley recorded by Steve Reiki. Uh, so at Nieve Nieve, for example, the orthogonal pattern shows rectangular blocks and the plaza is not located in the middle of the site. But another thing that I think is very interesting about this town is that it's a very small town that probably never grew bigger than the original reducción. So if you can see the blocks here, they are sort of like abandoned or probably used only for agriculture. Uh, and they have the exact shape. And actually then I tried to like measure it in the Google Earth. And they, they have the same measurements as, as the ones that you can see here. All this is abandoned. I mean, this is an archaeological site, so you have this is what, what, what they recorded. Also, also, the internal distribution of these domestic compounds differ. At Nieve Nieve, the compounds do not have space for the chakras. Uh, these small agricultural fields used by each family as it was stipulated by Toledo. The structures inside are agglutinated and their pattern looks almost identical to the internal distribution of domestic compounds dated to the late pre-Hispanic periods in other sites of this valley. See? So this is how they look inside, and they look very similar to what we've seen for pre-Hispanic periods. Uh, also, uh, um, 
based on historic uh, documentation, we know that a lot of people had their chakras uh, outside of the town, and they moved a lot and were actually living in other towns nearby, and this is recorded in the census. So each compound has at least, at least um, okay, yeah. So each compound has at least one house, and each house is divided in a series of domestic cores formed by rooms distributed around patios. So this is how they divide it. So we think that this difference in the pattern may be due to several reasons. First, Nieve Nieve might have been one of the first reducciones built in the repartimiento. However, the most important aspect would be that the site was built and occupied by local people. Even though Toledo established a Spanish administrative system, historic documentation, including the Revisita in, in 1588, indicate that everyone living at the site was local. The Buraca, who at this time was Diego Chauca Guaman, was the head of the largest local ayu in Sisicaya, and the assigned priest only visit, visited from time to time. So as we have seen before, the pattern of the site is mainly Spanish, although internally the architecture reflects a continuity of local traditions, and probably of a way of life and social organization that lasted through the first years of the colony. The only compound that differs from this pattern is the house of the Curaca. In this case, while it comprises several aspects from the Toledo instructions, the public spaces within the compound also reminiscence of local traditions. The main patio has a platform on one of its sides. Um, okay, the main patio has a platform on one of its sides, which is as accessed through lateral stairs, very similar to what we see in the audiencias, the public buildings in some of these late pre-Hispanic sites uh, in the Luring Valley. Also, we have seen that the House of the Curaca has two construction phases. This is the first one, and then it was extended this side. Um, during the second one, a new larger patio was built, and in the process, two rooms were eliminated. So this is the new patio in the second phase, and then these, these rooms, well, yeah, they, this, actually one room was eliminated, because they had to make this part over here. Um, so we know, according to demographic records, uh, that the population decreased rapidly, probably causing eventually the abandonment of the site. Uh, for example, we know for 1588 that we had around 600 or 700 people living. Uh, there's the first visita was around eight years before, and there's uh, there were at least 100 more people. And then we know, for example, uh, from Ignacio de Urdanivia, priest of Sisicaya, that mentions that for 16, 1641, the town had uh, only had 10 tributaries left. So uh, in this scenario, it calls our attention that the Curaca would have decided to extend the house, specifically the space used for public activities. This patio was probably used to congregate people in order to discuss administrative matters. The decrease in the population caused several stress to the inhabitants who had to meet the established tax rate. In this context, the Curaca would have had to deal with more internal conflicts and consequently prior prioritize the expansion of this space. Finally, even though the church represented a new religious order, we have found at least one sanctuary located in, the, in one of the hills, the hills nearby. So all, all lo local sanctuaries were supposed to be destroyed during the process of extirpación de idolatrias, but, uh, but as it is narrated in the Huarichiri manuscript, Diego Chaucahuaman, the local curaca, would have uh, continued celebrating ceremonies for local deities during colonial times. So this is a sanctuary, and it's located here. Uh, so in conclusion, <laughs> in conclusion, the town of Nieve Nieve would have been uh, the result of a complex period of time in which the imposition of external policies brought gradual changes while the local social, political, political and religious order subsisted. This situation was not new for local in inhabitants of the Luring Valley, who less than 60 years before experienced a similar situation when the Incas arrived to the valley and negotiated uh, through their elites to maintain the local border. Thank you.
about four minutes for questions before our next speaker. If anybody has anything to do that. Okay. <laughs> no pleasure? Just yes, sure. Uh, could you talk me a little bit about the social, uh, so that one day you're here for your social organization, and then that transition, because, because I think you're saying some continuity, you know, but, but are the compounds then as, as small as they were when you got into the, when you get to the blocks? I, I don't have a clear sense of, you know, are these blocks representing, say, two related families? Are they simply just people living on the same block? How does that translate to people and how they're living in the rooms that they didn't appear before the transition to uh, the room? Yeah. Oh, we have no idea. But it's very interesting. Like, if if we assume that the that that the site of Nieve is the town of Sisikaya, the Reducción of Sisikaya, we we would have a list of people living in that in that. So we could actually say that the house of the Curaca is the house of Diego Chaucaguaman, like with a name. Uh, so in in that sense. We've made that exercise first to see how many people you can fit in the in the town, and you could fit the 600, but it's as I was saying, very assimilated. Probably they were not all living there, uh, but also uh, we were trying to do that exercise to see between these 10 IUs and how many people you have in each IU, and it could have been divided, and then you would have like three or four houses occupied by the largest IU, then a couple by the next one, and like that, no? Um, also, we did this exercise to see uh, how many families, extended families, and nuclear families we had. So we've been playing a little bit with, with that data, but it's like we can only assume this because the name of the site, there's no nieve nieve in any historic records. So it's just like, a, like an exercise. It looks like the entrance to the church was on the west. Am I right that that's unusual? Is that usually on the east? Yes. I think, yeah, on the... No, yeah, it's on the west. It's on the west, you're right. Yeah, and also we're not sure if it has a lateral entrance. I mean, probably it does, but the thing is that that wall was... Uh, is not in a very good condition. And when we excavated, because some, some archaeologists before were saying that this was probably a Ayanka that was, that was turned into a church. Uh, but we haven't found any evidence that it was a Ayanka. It was built in only in, 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 in one moment. No? But yeah, the entrance is to the west, and then it has a lateral one that goes to the main plaza. Okay. Um, in the area to the south of and west, I guess, that looked like it might be an LIP region. Mm -hmm. um, did you find different evidence in that zone? Did you excavate in that zone compared to the gridded area? <clears throat> no. Actually, we didn't find a lot. Uh, the whole site doesn't have like a very l long occupation, uh, or at least that's what it seems in the, <coughs> in the, uh, in the excavation. <laughs> Uh, but no, we didn't have a, a, a lot of evidence because that's why we excavated there, because we thought that was earlier. Mm -hmm. But also, if that is earlier, and then you have the, that and the church were built first, or at least you have that, and then someone came and built the church, and then they built the other compounds, it doesn't make any sense because that style of church is dated to uh, the Producción de Soledadas which is 15, uh, 16, uh, 1570s. Uh, and then why would the other orthogonal uh, structures look like that and not like the later ones? So. Thank you. Yeah.